All right, uh, this is actually Joe's first time driving this as well. Um, oh, we're looking at Miller's Bar here. They're they're going to uh, retire, I heard. Yes. You guys hear about that? Yes, right. yes. And lately there's been a line out the door. So if they're really retiring, that's great. But if not, they're getting a lot of business back <laughs> right now. All right. So we're in a two liter EcoBoost all wheel drive, which I, I think is a really good powertrain for this. I haven't really driven it, so we're gonna find out. Yeah, so this is, uh, we're looking at what, 26,000 or so? For, yeah, I for, think uh, this the price one of this, is or? about 26. Uh, the XLT luxury package pushes it up to about 28, which a lot of people have gone with, but this is just a regular XLT with the two liter all wheel drive. All right, a couple other things as we're kind of looking here. It looks like they have this um, space that you could put a pretty large water bottle here. Um, really, they're kind of designing it for, for putting bottles here, you know, kind of a, as an extension of cup holder. So that's kind of cool. Uh, we see next to the screen, there's this space. Um, uh, you could use it for Twinkies uh, if you're Rady's Rides. Uh, you could also, I think somebody said it's a, um, you could put like a, action figure here somebody somebody mentioned yes, so. <laughs> i've seen that i've seen that yeah good spot to put your collectibles <laughs> so and so that's got good multi-use down here uh, okay so this is like pretty you cool prop yeah. your phone up there okay uh, and this is all kind of rubbery yep, so that's yep. kind of cool and what i found out is it does remove a lot of people uh you know were like oh geez this orange thing in there well you can actually take it out and i would assume as time goes by an aftermarket company might come along and they may make it in different colors or different things that you could swap out if you wanted like maybe like red or black or something like that. Okay, very nice. All right, and it's got the kind of the circular dial. I'm, I'm used to that with my daughter's uh, escape. So, all right, which is kind of cool. Uh, so how does it feel? It seems like it has enough power here? For, yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems like it's got enough power. Uh, the two liter EcoBoost, I think is a great motor from Ford. Um, it's in a lot of different things. It's been in the Fusion. It's it's very proven. It's reliable. I have a two liter EcoBoost in my Focus ST, and I got you know around 120,000 miles on that vehicle, and it still drives great. That's my daily driver, and you know I think that this is a great powertrain for this vehicle. It's not going to get quite the gas mileage that the hybrid gets, but uh, it's going to let you tow, and it's going to let you have all wheel drive, which in some instances is is going to be what people want for this truck. Um, but the hybrid also has a lot of benefits as well. So, I mean, you know, a lot of times I talk about this as kind of, uh, you know, vehicles being a price hack. I feel like my base Bronco is, is definitely a, a price hack. I think this is uh, even more so because, um, you know, I, I was kind of just looking at some of the stats. You can, you can fit five people here. You can see, you know, you have quite a bit of headroom here. It's, it's not like it's a, a tiny vehicle. I think a lot of people think, um, when they've seen the Maverick online, they think, okay, this is a really small vehicle. I mean, I think it's pretty much the same size-ish as a uh, Escape um, or a Bron Bronco Sport. Uh, so there is space for five people in the back, but then you've got a bed, and I've heard that you can put up to 38 uh, bags of Lowe's mulch back there. Um, it pr And, you know, this thing starts at 20K uh, if you get the, um, the base model. And uh, that base model gets 40 miles per gallon. This will probably get, what, in the upper 20s, 30 yeah. maybe? Something like that? 20s, I would expect. It might get close to 30 on the highway if you, if you baby it. Yeah. Uh, but the EPA puts it, you know, mid-20s, high-20s for city and highway. So I kind of like that I kind of like that choice uh, where you can get the all-wheel all drive. It's kind of a four-season kind of vehicle. Uh, or you can just, whatever, be a hyper-miler, so to speak. And uh, this is an alternative to a Prius uh, or a... Uh, you know, a smaller Honda vehicle or something like that that gets very high uh, miles per gallon. And I think some people might be looking at this as um, an alternative, not to a truck, but to actually a car that gets high miles per gallon, right? So Yeah, and I've seen that. I've had a, a lot of customers that, uh, and even in this area, that's kind of rare. A lot of customers that have never bought Fords before, um, maybe they've always been looking for a truck but they never uh, had the ability to put one in the driveway either because of price or because of size or because of fuel economy requirements. Uh, so I've seen a lot of people, you know, in Honda Civic, Subarus, uh, some of those vehicles have come over to Ford and placed orders with us. And 
and they're awaiting those vehicles. Uh, many of them have gone for the hybrids, which is gonna be a little bit of a longer wait. Uh, mostly uh, the orders that we have in for the hybrids, Ford has told us, you know, maybe another like three to six months on those. Uh, but like I said, the two liters and the all wheel drive, those are starting to roll in and uh, the hybrids shouldn't be too far behind. So uh, for the all wheel drives, I mean, basically for that, um well, I think what you're saying for the 26,000, that includes destination charge, right? Yeah, yeah, something yeah. Like that. I'm just talking straight MSRP yeah. right on the sticker when you walk up to the dealership. Uh, you know, you look at the sticker on one of these and uh, this vehicle especially is going to be right in that twenty six, twenty seven thousand dollars $27,000 spot if you qualify for any sort of employee pricing or friends and family pricing. Uh, that's going to drop it down for you. There's no rebates right now. Uh, what um, about X Plan? Is X Plan available on this? X Plan is available on this vehicle, um, and you know we've done quite a few X Plan deals and X Plan orders on this car. So, so I know you know being a Bronco person, um, uh, it's been very difficult. The, the the great thing about Village Ford is that they sell at MSRP. Other dealers do not. Uh, this is another step beyond that because it, you know if you get uh, if you get the X plan just as somebody kind of walking off the street and and there are various ways to do that. I think if you are a club member or something like that. Yep, the Mustang you, Club of America has it. Um, I don't know if there's an official tie into any of the Bronco clubs yet, but I could see that happening. Um, and then there's like a list of like two or three hundred companies that work with Ford in some capacity. And they are all uh, able to get X Plan through the partner program. Um, I'm gonna pull up next to this F-150 here. This is one of our demo F-150s, and we can uh, we can see what this thing looks awesome. like. Awesome! That truck. is what I was hoping. So great. Start the video. We'll get your. All right. So we've lined it up. Uh, I didn't want Joe to go much further because it looked like uh, this is actually going to hit the curb, uh, or at least that uh, air dam might. Um, but they're lined up more or less. The uh, F-150 might be slightly ahead. Let's just kind of walk around. You can kind of see the length difference. This Maverick is longer than my Bronco, uh, but certainly not as long as an F-150. Let's look at the back. And then you can kind of see the F-150 is just dwarfing it when you look at it from the side. <laughs> so and I'll go to the front here in a second. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer so you can kind of see them side by side. Seeing it next to an F-150 looks tiny, but it is actually really big when you when you bigger than you might think uh, when you go inside one. All right, so Joe's actually sitting. Let me pan out a little bit here so you can kind of see what's going on. We're in the Maverick. You can see the F-150 behind it. Uh, Joe's sitting in the back seat. Looks like plenty of room. I didn't adjust my seat, so I was I was sitting in this uh, in the front seat. Five ten, I am. Um, plenty of headroom. Uh, you can squeeze in three across if yeah. you need to uh but you know it's it's a probably uh, mostly a four um four passenger vehicle you can kind of see the space between us here pull this down yeah, surprisingly uh surprisingly comfortable back here i got my seat left in the driver position when i was just driving and i got enough room i mean i would say you know, in Michigan, it's big to go up north, and uh, that's usually a two or three hour drive or more for most people. And I can see myself sitting back here and, you know, being able to ride up north and, you know, a couple buddies in the car. Maybe you got your golf clubs or your fishing gear, or, you know, if you got an all wheel drive, you could even, you know, tow a little boat with this thing. So, uh, you know, good vehicle for, for going out and, uh, you know, going on adventures and bringing all your friends and all your equipment along. So, and you're getting good gas mileage.